Well, well, well. We are outside on a beautiful day, and we have to go backwards quick to the beginning of our new unit, the atmosphere. And I thought we'd come outside because I'd be in the atmosphere with a little bit more hmm, energy than in the house. I'm on the campus of Columbia. And the atmosphere is going to change actually quite a lot between now, this afternoon at 325 and about 9 tonight when the wind is going to pick up. And the wind, of course, is an essential part of the atmosphere. It's the gas moving. And, of course, we're surrounded by the atmosphere, which is a gas, but has within it lots of water, which sometimes is liquid, sometimes is solid. And then, of course, our oxygen and our nitrogen. I thought it would be nice to just take a quick look at a satellite loop of the atmosphere currently right over New York. This is, as you see, the 12th of March, 2021, and it's 2006 UTC, which is Greenwich Mean Time, which is five hours ahead, which means that it was 1506 Greenwich Mean Time, and 15 is three hours past noon, so 3.06, so just, just a little bit ago, we had this atmosphere. And if I leave, and I hope I can come back without freezing, if I leave and go to this website right here, GOES Image Viewer, this is a, a satellite which will loop an animation of the current atmosphere. And here we go, we can see beautiful clear skies over our region, but with some clouds moving in and wind that's going to be blowing in from the northwest. It's gonna be a cold wind tonight. Temperatures dropping down into the 30s. And you can see below us, there's a front of weather that is just leaving, or an air mass, I should say, that's leaving. So we have a particular air mass with water vapor up here, clouds, a drier air mass in between, and then this more probably warmer and also moist air mass. So the atmosphere, very complicated, very interesting. So if you were at home right now, I would say, and I'll say, to do what I'm gonna ask. What are the major ingredients of the atmosphere? You might wanna try to jot them down or just wait about a second and we'll go through them. Have these parts always been the same? So have the ingredients of the current atmosphere always been the same? Why do we have the atmosphere that we do? Is it preordained that we should have a 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen atmosphere with 1% of other gases? Is that set in stone? Or are there reasons for the atmosphere that we do have? So here are the numbers. Nitrogen, 78%. Nitrogen has been in the atmosphere probably since the beginning. Oxygen at 21% today in 2021, but it's not always been like that. Only, only in the last 600 million years, and probably a little less that we've been at this exact percentage. Probably actually, yeah, probably actually more like um, even a maybe 150, 250 million years that we've had it at 21%. And then argon, which is the greatest constituent remaining, plus other gases such as things you're familiar with, water vapor, carbon dioxide, ozone, a form of oxygen. And so to answer the questions that are up above, we can say no, 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 the atmosphere has evolved over time. Earth's mass, the range of surface temperature, the chemistry of nitrogen, tectonic activity and life have all shaped the atmosphere as we see it today. Or as we see it, how it's, as we experience it today. For some reason, my slideshow is a frozen. Here we go. Let's take each in turn, though, each of these questions. So, Earth's mass determines the amount of gravitational force. Gravity holds the gaseous envelope called the atmosphere in place. The range of surface temperature allows water at the surface to exist as a solid, liquid, and gas, keeps oxygen a gas, 
nitrogen gas. So these are things that are influencing our atmosphere. The mass of the Earth determining that we can hold on to our gaseous components that are of enough density. We do lose some gases, hydrogen and helium tend to leave the atmosphere because they're not dense enough. But we can hold the nitrogen, we can hold the oxygen, we can hold the water vapor, the carbon dioxide. Nitrogen, which is the major component, is in the form of what we call N2, a, a molecule, two atoms of nitrogen. And it's unreactive. You're breathing it all the time. You light a match, it doesn't burn. It's unreactive in that form. The movement of tectonic plates, which are plates colliding and making mountains, plates subducting and creating volcanoes, losing um, land mass, new land mass forming where plates separate, these changes cycle carbon through the spheres of the earth and has, until the past hundred years or so, kept carbon dioxide at a fairly constant level in the atmosphere. There have been abrupt changes in the historic geologic record of the earth, but the recent change transferring billions and trillions of tons, gigatons of carbon dioxide from underground into the atmosphere is a significant change. And then of course bacterial life which evolved somewhere in the range of maybe two billion, maybe three billion years ago and eventually became a form of life called aerobic which relied on oxygen. Well bacterial life helped to evolve the presence or did create the presence of oxygen in the atmosphere because of course there was bacteria that began to photosynthesize. The composition of dry air, water in the atmosphere varies from near zero to up to four percent depending upon location. So four percent would be in a, say a rainforest and zero would be in a desert. And here you can see the N2 at 780,840 parts per million of a given volume, 209,000 for oxygen, argon, then carbon dioxide, very little carbon dioxide, then some neon, some helium, methane, a powerful car global warming gas along with carbon dioxide at, at just two parts per million, very little. So. You can see how then we get down to these that are very low. Uh, ozone, which is critical to life, is a very small amount of our atmosphere. So the structure of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is an approximately 100 kilometer layer of mixed gases which surround the Earth. The air has less and less mass density the further you climb towards space. 90% of all the molecules in the atmosphere are in the layer nearest the Earth. The atmosphere represents about one millionth of the Earth's total mass. So it's of insignificant in terms of mass. This would be what it would look like in terms of the layers of the atmosphere. We have the troposphere, which is the lowest layer, then going up to the stratosphere, then the mesosphere, then the thermosphere, and finally the exosphere. And you can see what we might find in the troposphere would be water vapor to the lower stratosphere. Then an ozone layer, which keeps us safe from ultraviolet radiation. And then things that we do up in the upper stratosphere with jets, weather balloons, and finally space for our upper thermosphere and exosphere. Again, presently, the atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 0.41% carbon dioxide, 0.9% argon. Water vapor ranges from 0% over the deserts and polar caps to as much as 4% over jungles. But our atmosphere was not always like this. The first atmosphere we considered to have existed from 4.6 to 4.5 billion years ago. Its composition was probably hydrogen gas, helium, and other elements and compounds that are outgassing from the accretion of material that's forming the Earth in the early solar system. These do not last long before the collision, or this does not last long, this atmosphere, before the collision with Thea destroys essentially the Earth that had first formed. 
a new period of differentiation of the Earth then progresses with the formation of the Moon and the eventual formation of an inner core, outer core, mantle, and crust. This simultaneous with period of silicate rain. What is that? That is a rock. If we found it today, a silicate made of silicon and oxygen. And in that period, the Earth is so hot that what is a rock today, a frozen material, was a liquid raining out of the sky and creating a new surface for the Earth. Earth's differentiated core, solid inner, liquid outer, creates Earth's magnetic field, hooray, which deflects solar winds and allows new period of outgassing that is protected from the solar winds by the magnetosphere. Yay, without that, those early gases that formed that early atmosphere may have blown away. The second atmosphere, 4.3 to 2 billion years, created by rapid, continuous volcanic outgassing. Gases released similar to those created by modern volcanoes, H2O, water, carbon dioxide, CO2, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, pure sulfur, chlorine, nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia, and methane, all outgassing. Meanwhile, the ocean begins to fall as the Earth is cooling, and H2O, in gaseous form, condenses to form liquid falling into basins carved out by the collision with the... Uh... And here we see an example of outgassing from the Cleveland Island in the Aleutians. I think it is called the Cleveland Volcano. Releasing gas and smoke. Smoke, of course, solid, suspended in a gas. Here's Etna releasing gases. Mount Etna in Italy releasing gas into the night. Here is Mount Etna releasing smoke and gas from the Italian peninsula. And again, another shot of volcanic outgassing. Imagine thousands of these letting off smoke aerosols into the atmosphere. What was missing? Oxygen or ozone. Ozone is also known as O3. But we had what was called a reducing environment at this time. Any time oxygen was released and free, floating around the atmosphere, it was immediately combined with other elements to form rocks, for instance, silicates or um, iron oxides, sulfates, so many different oxygen-forming minerals. O2, therefore, does not build up in the atmosphere. There was no free oxygen. I don't know why that always pops up at the top, but I never fixed it. There was no free oxygen in the atmosphere. So now we need the third atmosphere to get that. Two billion to 600 million years ago. Liquid water within the large saline ocean basins becomes the first significant filter of dangerous ultraviolet radiation. In shallow ocean water, the first photosynthesizing bacteria evolves. Free oxygen begins to build up in the ocean and air. You should say in the ocean and air. Many bacteria already exist, but not using the sun. They are not using the sun as a source of energy. But cyanobacteria are. These are bacteria that produce O2. And they begin to outcompete anaerobic bacteria bacteria that relied on other sources of um, elements to respire, such as sulfur or methane or iron. But no, we have a new set of bacteria, cyano, blue-green algae, which you may have even seen. Here they are, an algal bloom in a lake near Detroit with all these farms fertilizing, 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 providing nitrogen for these algae to grow. And so much algae is grown that it reads green from our beautiful remote sensing device that created this, I believe, true color image. So over the next 1.6 billion years, photosynthesis, releasing oxygen as a waste product. At first, O2 is removed from the atmosphere by rocks. Think of rust. Slowly, O2 begins to replace CO2 consumed in photosynthesis. 
the amount of free oxygen in the atmosphere rises from 1 to 10 percent. Most is released by cyanobacteria, which increase in abundance in the fossil record 2.3 billion years ago. The present levels of O2 were probably not achieved until about 600 million years ago. And of course, we know this from looking at rocks. So much of what we know about the Earth is from looking at rocks. And we look at reddish, yellow, and brown rocks. When you see red and yellow and brown rocks, bricks, their color can be explained by the presence of oxygen in the air or water. Without oxygen, you would see a gray rock. So you see this beautiful red. This beautiful red is caused by the presence of oxygen, which bound with iron that was a part of the rock and formed, essentially, hematite, a mineral which you also know often as rust. And you can see in this picture, I hope, that there are bands of gray, periods of the Earth's history. Remember, time is, is registered in rocks going upwards, the older rock on the bottom. The bands are periods where sediment has been deposited, where it's gray, very little oxygen. Then you get a pulse of oxygen and you get this reddish rock. Gray, less oxygen, a pulse of oxygen gray and then up here a discontinuity between the gray and the yellow rock where you have some probable source of oxygen to make this rock a yellowish color. Life continues to evolve and throughout the billions of years N2 remains in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is very water soluble, dissolves in water, seltzer, so it finds its way from the atmosphere into the ocean becoming carbonate which then can form minerals, both organic shells and inorganic limestone. And these we find in rocks suddenly, trapping carbon in the ground. And remarkably, suddenly, oxygen which percolates out of the ocean into the atmosphere undergoes a chemical reaction which creates O3. O2 molecules in the atmosphere are bombarded by UV radiation. The single oxygen atoms then combine with another O2 and create ozone, which absorbs ultraviolet radiation, which would otherwise damage living creatures out of the water. And there we are. See the evolution of life on land begin to be possible. And here, is why ozone is so important. Because your jet ski cannot evolve from the water to the land without being protected by this beautiful layer of stratospheric ozone. The ozone layer filters out harmful ultraviolet radiation and this allowed the evolution of organisms that migrated from the crowded oceans onto the land. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will stop.